Welcome to the Interurban Era. Today's build will be a moderately difficult project of git bashing a number of HO scale bridges together. Today we'll be using a number of HO scale plate and truss girder bridges to complete our build. For this build, we'll be using the excellent kits designed by Walthers. They fit together well and provide great kit bashing fodder. They're also easily found at your hobby shop or online and aren't too expensive. You'll need a few essential tools to build these bridges properly, starting with 120 grit sandpaper, a pair of flush cutters, an X-Acto knife, Tester's Model Master Plastic Cement for gluing everything together, a pair of scissors, razor saw to make fine precise cuts, a dremel with a round sanding bit to do the bulk of the material finishing, and finally, don't forget these, safety glasses. After unboxing the kit, it's wise to spray all of the parts trees whichever color you want to paint the bridge first. This will ensure there aren't any nooks and crannies that go unpainted as you complete your kit. After you've sprayed the initial coat, you can also pre-weather the model itself by taking some dark, flat, brown spray paint and spraying the underside of the bridge components. One of the main challenges of this kit bash will be to reduce the overall length of the bridge by one section, so some careful kit bashing will be needed. In this view, you can see the bridge pieces cut down to their final size. Do make sure to leave an overlap on the top beam. Using your flush cutters, be sure to remove one section of each of the truss side frames. To prevent the motor tool from damaging the rest of the beams that would be kept, I put some masking tape over them. I also began cutting with an X-Acto knife the beams that will be cut away, so that when the motor tool goes in, it won't damage the beams that will stay. The finished result should look something like this. One beam has the gusset plate removed, exposing just the beams themselves on the left, and the other one has all the beams removed with the gusset plate carefully flat sanded into position on the right. If both the beams and the gusset plate have been properly sanded down, they should fit seamlessly together with some model glue. Make sure to use something that's machined flat to align the bottom of the bridge together so you don't have a bow or a kink in the bottom. Then repeat the process for the inside of the truss, and then use some glue to join the two halves together. The next step will be cutting down the central plate girder section. You can see in this view that there is only half of the bridge assembled so far, so I took the other plate girder section and cut it down to just one section with a razor saw, making sure that it overlapped properly. You can see the two pieces mounted properly with the end plate ready to be installed. One fun discovery I made while kit bashing this is that you really only need half of the top structure on the truss bridge from the kit. One trick I use often is to use masking tape as a clamp. Here you can see the black masking tape is holding the top cord of the bridge to the rest of the bridge while the glue sets. Using only half of the top of the bridge worked surprisingly well, but there was still a little gap, so I filled it in with some strip styrene before weighing it down with one of my vices I have on the workbench to ensure that it glued and set flat and perfect. The bottom of the bridge fit together even better than the top. I just used one half of the bridge kit, and then I cut down one section of the other half so that it mated perfectly. Once the bridge was fully assembled, I resprayed it with the aluminum paint to ensure that every part of the bridge was evenly coated in paint and that there were no blemishes. For this project, I was required to build two identical short span truss bridges. So here's the second one all complete and ready for spraying. The nice thing about doing more than one of these kit batches is that I was able to do the second one in half the time once I figured out a good approach to being able to splice the bridge properly apart and back together. After taking some shots of them fully mocked up, it was time for some weathering. I'll do a full weathering tutorial very soon, but why don't you sit back, relax, and enjoy the weathering process.
Later that day, my client came by to pick up the finished bridges. He was extremely impressed with the amount of detail added by just some modest weathering. I will look forward to installing them on his layout next week. I'm glad this somewhat complex kit bash came together nice and smooth. Now, with some encouragement from friends, I have set up my own Patreon, so you can check that out at patreon.com slash interurbanera. Cheers, and I'll see you soon.